just like electricity like the power of electricity travels to copper wires the God's power can flow through people but not only through people it can flow through other things if you take notes I want you to write down four things that the power can flow through not only God's power but also the power of the enemy the first one is people we see that when people touch Jesus they were healed and Jesus says power left me God's power can flow through people but the power of demons and Satan can also flow through people there are people who have so much demons in them that when you come in contact you will be affected also God's power and the power of the devil can flow through animals or through places. I'm sorry first one or second one will be places places we see like cities like Sodom and Gomorrah we see cities that Jesus condoned he says that the, my power has been manifested in the city but you guys have not repented we see for example a city like Jericho in a negative contact when this Jericho was defeated Joshua pronounced the curse and he said whoever's going to build this city his firstborn and then uh, he uh, pronounced the curse on his other child that will be affected there are places that have power connected to them that's why Jerusalem was the place Jesus told people to to wait for him God told the temple was the place for people to go to worship we know now God lives within us but there are still places that have more power of God or more power of the devil in them if you read in Tri cities there's about 10 haunted places one of the top places in Tri-Cities that gets haunted and this is not a Christian newspaper that writes that it's a, it's a secular newspaper that writes that is actually a baby cemetery where stuff happens and they begin to describe of things that begin to happen that you can actually go now and, and check that out I highly discourage you to do that just come to our prayer line <laughs> they, the movies that are based on haunted houses or haunted things all of these things they're not just the imagination of somebody who's bored in the basement of their house trying to make a buck there's a lot of true stories most of the haunted places or places where stuff happens usually it's because of suicide, murder, or some kind of a death or abuse. Almost all, even I did a lot of searching today. A lot of the places where people were completely just, just killed and cut into pieces or the whole family was killed. And now in those places, hundreds of years later, weird paranormal activity that happens. I know a particular uh, story even in Tri-Cities where in one particular house in the room, a man committed suicide. Every family that has moved into that house since three or four of them has been divorced and so because a certain spirit that lives there that's why when you move into a new place you always want to dedicate that place you want to get together with your family join hands and simply say we're paying the bills all the demons out because the devil's not paying the bill so he has no place to stay there but if you don't kick him out he's gonna stick around same thing you want to do with your car same thing you want to do with places that you are in you want to dedicate them dedicate them to God and you simply begin to proclaim and confess good things to happen in those places because somebody say amen because the power flows through places the third thing that the power flows through is animals in the Bible we see that when demons left a particular man that they entered into pigs and the pigs violently ran so demons can actually could enter into animals now this does not mean when an animal misbehaves an animal is an animal okay it's not your child if your child mis misbehaves doesn't mean they always have a demon so when an animal acts like an animal that doesn't mean that the animal has a demon but we must understand that the demons can inhabit animals also even God can use animals how did God get ravens who do not share their food even with their young to share meat with prophet Elijah how did God let Jesus ride a donkey that nobody has ever ridden if you ever want to get you know you always want to get on a new car you never want to get on a new horse or a donkey <laughs> nobody has ever ridden that is not a good thing that's like a suicide watch getting Jesus is getting on a donkey nobody else has ever ridden that is actually very very dangerous and that donkey didn't flip him out that the donkey didn't drop him that shows the fact that there's power of God that affects even animals the fact that a donkey could speak to a prophet and instruct a prophet tells us that the power of God can flow also through the animals. And fourth one is objects. It's when God told uh, people in Deuteronomy, he says that I don't want you to bring certain objects. Don't bring anything abominable into my house or into your house because you're going to become like those objects. You're going to be doomed. And so there are objects that even we see in the Bible like rod of Moses. This is a simple rod. That's a shepherd's rod. He's shepherding people with it. And God says, Moses, what do you have? He says, I have a rod. God says, drop it. 
Moses drops the rod and if you watch Bible very carefully you will see that ever since Moses dropped the rod it was no longer referred to as the rod of Moses it was referred as to the rod of God and then God instead of doing miracle on his own he actually told Moses take the rod so like, well, God why couldn't you just split the Red Sea God said you lift the rod God says take the rod hit the rock take the rod and do this with the rod do that and that why because then the, the rod became the object God used the rod is not to be worshipped we don't see nobody walking around today worshiping a rod but in that moment God used the rod to accomplish his purposes can somebody say amen, amen. same thing happens people who walk around and say that demonic things objects paintings you know certain voodoo dolls and souvenirs and charms and these things are simply innocent or you know witchcraft books white magic black magic you know Ouija boards and all other things dream catchers all of these things horoscopes they're nothing they're just innocent they're just poetry they're just art listen these things if in the spiritual in the godly things we see that God's spirit can use things we also know that the demons can use things and when we are oblivious and blind buried our head into the sand acting like the world is not spiritual we bring these things into our life we can come into danger what our life can have certain consequences we don't know where they're coming from amen just like what we, we heard today from Ariseli. I remember it like yesterday when she didn't mention some of the details of her story is when we prayed for her on Sunday after the service Ariseli would cry uncontrollably and so we would pray for her she would vomit a lot of blood I have a picture actually she doesn't know we have a picture didn't want to post it up to surprise you because you would lose your whole story a lot of like nasty stuff when that stuff was happening I had my I only had my phone on and and I turn around because if I keep watching I'm like I'm gonna join her in that bucket very nasty things would happen and so she's like she's like I feel so much better I'm like you better feel better after all of this because you threw a lot of stuff over there she goes back home and next day she begins to call and says I feel exactly the same thing and I was like you gotta be kidding me really you got more stuff we would go into her house and I'm not kidding you we're walking in and she's sitting in the toilet like this on her knees crying and vomiting stuff again and again and again and so we walk around the house uncontrollably crying not being able to work not being able to literally just at the end of her life and so we're beginning to pray for her we're beginning to pray around the house and I walk in and I see this piece of paper over the door and I saw word demonio or demonio or something Spanish how do you say demon in Spanish demonio yeah I know half of word demon the moment I saw demon the that gave me enough and I was like what is this she's like well some some kind of a grandma from Mexico gave me this to you know protect the house from bad spirits anytime anything you bring into the house from some kind of a grandma <laughs> God bless the grandmas okay especially a lot of stuff and a lot of Catholicism in Mexico and I speak this with very respect to Catholicism a lot of Catholicism especially in a lot of the villages they mix with a cult same thing as orthodox in Ukraine they mix a lot of this stuff with Christianity new age and a lot of other God forgive me crap combine it all together and they put it under the banner of keeping the good spirits the bad spirits same thing with Native Americans when they you know build that little uh, dream catcher to put in to catch the bad spirits and to catch the bad dreams and to let the good dreams come into your life and people buy that simply saying well there's no big deal about it but listen this is what happened when we removed that thing and she removed a few other idols on her own hands her face started to change and she stopped crying stopped puking, stopped throwing up, went back to work and things started to get back to normal and this is just one out of many examples that when you allow certain objects that have been dedicated to devil and demons and satan, listen they have a potential of harming your life in the ways you cannot imagine. I can remember the first time I drank. It was their 40s of old English, and I, li I liked the way it, I liked the way I felt the first time. I liked the way I felt. I felt relaxed, and it progressed from there. It came to the point where I drank every day when I was in high school. When I realized that I had an issue with drinking, I went to pills. I started out with Hydro 10s. It went from Hydro 10s. Those weren't enough, and I went to Oxycodone 30s. I started out just as fun recreational use and then it got to the point where I got addicted to them. It wasn't even fun using them anymore. It was, you know, I had to have the pills or else I couldn't function. I remember waking up in the mornings and I'd, I'd literally take 10 to 20 Hydro 10s depending on how many I had and how many I could take. That was just to get me through school and school was only a few hours a day. I ended up getting a girlfriend that used 
um, meth and heroin. For the first months, I remember I would beg her. I would beg her to stop using it. And I'd go to sleep and she would be there. And I remember I'd wake up in the morning, she'd be gone. I ran out of pills and I was going through withdrawals and I couldn't stand it anymore. I couldn't handle going through withdrawals. That I'd asked my girlfriend if we could get heroin and I could do heroin. I needed the fix. I needed to, I couldn't feel like that. I didn't want to feel like that. The first time I ever shot heroin, I shot it up in my arm. From the day that I started using heroin, there was never a day that I didn't, did not use heroin. I did that for a steady six months and at that point, I ran out of heroin and I was I started going through withdrawals. I remember I tried to get some and it fell through. You know, I needed to do something. I don't want I I I'm going through withdrawals. First time I ever used meth, I had shot it up in my I'd shot up in my arm and just like with heroin and all the other drugs, I, I used it every day. I was full on using it and there was nothing that was gonna stop me from using it. I was at a friend's house that didn't allow heroin to be in her house. So I went in the bathroom, I locked the door, I shot it up, and I tried to stand up once, and I kind of fell back down, and I was like, oh, this, this doesn't feel right. And I went to go stand up again, and that's when I blacked out. I don't remember anything. I woke up in the living room of that same house, had a knot on my head, and I didn't even think anything of it. There was a person in there, she told me that you overdosed. It didn't even phase me, it didn't even cross my mind to stop or anything. Uh, I went right back to using drugs. I was at a park with a girl that I knew and she had heroin, which is a, it's a downer, and I had meth, it's an upper, it's a stimulant, and uh, when you mix them together, the, it's called a goofball. I had never really done one, she did them all the time, so she mixed them together. We split the heroin. When she went and used hers, made sure she was okay, and then when I used mine, I remember I got done shooting it up and then I handed her the needle. I started driving. It was within 30 seconds that I that I blacked out. And I ended up crashing my car. I woke up getting put in an ambulance. I had no idea what was going on. They ended up taking me to the hospital. They ran the blood work and when I left, I thought I was free to go and they ended up taking me to jail. They put me in the back of the car and I was talking to the cop because you know, I can't be mad at them. That was when I found out that that same cop was at the scene when I had got my DUI and crashed because I had overdosed. He had said that when they arrived, they didn't even think they were gonna have to book me into Benton County Jail. They, uh, when they arrived, I was pronounced dead. Pronounced dead, dead. You know, I was kind of shocked, but I went to jail. I got out a few weeks later, and again, I went back to using drugs. You know, it got to the point where I got hit with four felonies in two days. I, I continued to use. I went to my court dates high. I did every, everything I did. I still got high. I can't say that there was an ultimate low for me that made me stop because every day was every day was low. I went to a drug rehab that was in Michigan State. It was a long-term treatment. I had left early. I had left to come back and take care of my court. I had met up with an old acquaintance. She had asked if I wanted to come to church. I had said, yeah, I'd check it out. I wanted to explore that. That was the first time that I had visited Hungry Gen. It was really awkward. Everybody was praying out loud with no background in church or relationship with God. I didn't know how to pray. I knew nothing about the Bible. I knew nothing about anything that they were talking about. I was attending church on a regular basis. There for a little while, I actually, I kind of fell off. People reached out to me. It was like, I wanted, I, I wanted to come to church. I wanted to have a relationship with God. I wanted to be able to pray. I wanted to be able to do you know, I wanted to be hungry for God, and it took it took me a while. It was nothing that just clicked for me. It was nothing that changed overnight. Just like I was full on with drugs, I wanted to be full on with God and know God's Word, my relationship with God. And so that's when I decided to get baptized. I decided to come to morning prayer. I decided to make a commitment to God that I was going to seek God. Since then, my life has never been the same. I never thought God would bring me such a satisfaction. My name is Brian Ashley, and this is my testimony.